This is the June 2012 exam, page 7. We're on question 45, which talks about a setup for demonstrating motion. And there's a support base, and there's a compressed spring, and a, a rod, and a lever. And there's two balls, ball A, which is about to be hit by the spring and knocked sideways, and ball B, which is about to be a, a release, because when the string goes sideways, it kind of releases it. Now, this is a classic piece of physics equipment. And uh, I have one here, and it works. This is an electrical one, it's a solenoid. And uh, sure enough, you put a ball here, sticking on this one, and uh, when you hit the solenoid, it pushes it in and throws that sideways. And at the same time, this ball is sitting right here, and when it uh, moves inwards, it moves in very quickly, and it releases the ball so that it falls straight down. So this is a classic example, and the idea is that it teaches that the acceleration due to gravity is independent, depending uh, only on your height above the ground. So this falls from a certain height, it takes a certain amount of time. This falls from the same height, takes the same amount of time. However, during that period of time, it uh, travels this way. So it, it'll land over there, and even though they both hit the ground at the same time, uh, one is further away because it has some horizontal velocity, while their initial uh, velocities in the vertical direction are both zero. So that's the lab. Maybe you remember it from class. All right, let's read what they want to know. When the lever is released, the support rod withdraws from B, just as I explained it, allowing it to fall. The same instant the rod contacts with A, propelling it horizontally. What statement describes the motion that is observed uh, for the balls? Ball A travels at a constant velocity. Well, no, it's going to go sideways at a constant velocity, but it'll also start to accelerate downwards, so that's not true. Ball A hits a tabletop at the same time as ball B. That is a correct answer. That's what the whole thing is trying to show. Ball B hits a tabletop before A. No, no, this is... And that's kind of what people think. Well, it's going straight down and it'll hit first. But in fact, this whole demonstration is to show you that they hit at the same time. So ball uh, answer three is what people might guess, but it's the wrong one. Ball B travels with an increasing acceleration. No, it's on planet Earth. It's going to accelerate the same. There's no rocket engine on that thing, so there it is. Question 46. Two speakers, S1 and S2, operating in phase in the same medium produce the circular wave pattern shown. These are making the exact same sound. The question is, at what two points is constructive interference occurring? Well, if you look at your key over here, it says that uh, the lines are wave crests, the dashed lines are wave troughs. That's kind of traditional. And so at this point, we've got two crests together. That's constructive. At this point, there's a crest and a trough, destructive. A trough and a crest, destructive. At this point, uh, two troughs, and so that's constructive. In fact, you would have a line of constructive interference right at that point. Oh, I could show you that. Let me, first of all, let's get the right answer, A and D. That would be A and D right here, so that's choice two. Let me go show you this, this phenomena. You'll like this. Let me go. Okay, here they are. I found them. Now, this is going to mess with the TV screen because the scan right on a TV is uh, kind of weird. Oh, man, this is cool. At any rate, I don't even know if the camera will, will resolve these out. These are a whole bunch of small circles. This is transparency of a bunch of small circles. And when you put them together, you get these interference patterns. But what I'm seeing on my screen is awesome. At any rate, they're points of positive and destructive interference. I give these to my students every year. This is the coolest thing. These are called uh, um, uh, moray patterns. If you Google moray patterns, you might find this. The two together, you get this thing going on. You get areas of constructive interference and areas of destructive interference, but uh, I should get some classic 60s music because this was a classic 60s uh, effect. Well, that was page seven. Hope that was fun.